Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the start line by a chemist, engineer, former Air Force colonel, wife, musician, retired NASA astronaut who's logged more than 180 days in space. And most importantly, mom. <laughs> She's featured in the documentary Space, The Longest Goodbye. We welcome her. Dr. Katie Coleman. Well, thank you. It's uh, nice that you started off with, um, you know, air travel and let's go fly because um, I certainly spent a lot of hours over the state of Texas flying while I was training at NASA. And it's always nice to see Lubbock. Katie, let's go beyond the mic. I could spend hours asking you about the flute duet you did with Ian Anderson, but in space, the longest goodbye, the challenge is surviving a three year trip to mars without real-time communication with earth you've flown on the space shuttle and in a soyuz what's the biggest challenge psychologically from your experience i think that it's about communication and connection and you know you're with a group of people that become your family i mean and it's not because you were like a perfect uh, you know group of people that were all picked together you just are family by virtue of the fact that you were put on this crew together and We have to figure out how to get along, sometimes in a small space like in the Soyuz capsule, but then up on the space station, it's a bigger space, but there's still nobody else. Basically, this is kind of practice time for that mission that you described, you know, three years door to door going to Mars and back. And so... You know, learning how to how to do those things, it involves some very human things. And I think this movie really shares why it's important why we have to make sure we take care of the humans because they really are the sort of the soul of the program. You're one of a small group of people who have seen the darkness of space firsthand. How do you you mentally prepare yourself for the isolation of space? Well, first I would say that it's actually really busy up there. And the most important thing to do is actually just what you said, to be prepared to kind of just like focus in and think, What's it like for me right now? What what am I thinking? What am I hearing about? Um, If I was a better person, I would have kept a journal, right? (laughs) And And I do think that that's one of the ways to sort of capture how you feel and what it felt like to be in that moment. But one of the ways to prepare was to ask other people what it had been like, other astronauts. And and they talked to me about how it'll be so busy if you don't sort of take some little snapshots in your mind of what you felt like and how it felt to be there. When you get back, you'll just be sort of narrating a movie that has a person that looks like you in it. And so I really tried to make sure that I captured some of those those moments. And and you'll see a lot of them actually in the movie because those are my conferences with my family. You know, once a week we would have video conferences. And I, you know, that's when you really are yourself. And, and those are some of the most special moments that I had was sharing that experience with my family. Katie, if you could tell future astronauts one thing before they go up, what would it be? Well, I would tell them they're never going to get to be future astronauts if they don't learn to speak up for who they are and put that on an application, whether it involves writing or sharing their work or stories or really explaining who they are and what they do and what they're proud of. Because we need future astronauts that are from every walk of life. And so often when you start thinking about, now it happens to me too, when I'm filling out some kind of application, I think, you know, am I really a musician? I like to play, but, you know, but you know, the thing is, I'm the musician that's up there right now. And this is what I can bring. And so you have to be brave about speaking up for who you are and sharing it, actually, which I will say I do very candidly in this movie, as does my family. It's a decision we made together. And so having the courage to share who you really are is the way that you get to be one of those astronauts sitting in that seat on the way to Mars. And I would tell them to entertain the fact that some of these ideas about psychological health and all those things are going to seem like, really? I'm never, it's just like, who would, am I going to pretend that guy is my husband or my sweetheart? Give it a chance and see what you do get from things as opposed to sort of bemoaning what you don't and give things a chance and, There's some pretty wild things that'll probably turn out to be pretty helpful for your journey. Space, The Longest Goodbye is the documentary, and Dr. Katie Coleman joins us for The Rocking Eight. Katie, all this is is eight random questions. Answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. There's no pressure. Okay. Your favorite astronaut meal was what? Um, 
Beef stroganoff. Who gave you your first flute and do you still have it? Oh, I do not have it, but I play, my mom gave it to me and it was, I played on a Bundy for seven years and I think it made me a better flute player. Are you still drinking your creation, the Artemis? Oh, I'm so glad that you know you found out about that. We did not win um, that fundraising I'm challenge. Shocked. I know so we were robbed. Totally. Um, I do love that drink. I, I called it the Artemis. Other people call it an aviator, but we have to update the, these things and keep up with the times. What's the one thing that eats up the most time for you? Ooh, being organized enough. <laughs> Rats. Was there anything that used to scare you as a kid? Not that I can think of. Well, jump like, you know, when you're like going to jump off a rock into a creek, you know, where there's a big, you know, it's deep enough and all that kind of stuff. And, and if I think about it, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to do that. And if I just go, okay, I've evaluated all these things and I'm, and I just decide I'm going to do it. And I don't take those last seconds to think before you jump, then I do just great. And so I, it's sometimes you have to really, you know, you evaluate the risks and then you take the leap. How about your favorite place? Just to think. Hmm. On the couch with a cat. What's the one thing you always ask your parents or Santa for every year? Ooh. Ooh. I don't know. We didn't, we weren't a listy family. You've seen beautiful auroras on earth, the blackness of space. But what one picture still is vivid in your memory? Just looking out that cupola window. And it would depend how you did it. Like you could, we're sort of coming up into this window, the window you see behind me. Come up into this window and you look out in every direction is the earth. But if then you sort of kneel on that window, now you're like surfing over the earth. And so just the different perspectives you could have. Um, I just, I really loved being with the earth and i i didn't feel like i was away from home i just thought home was bigger than i thought space the longest goodbye is the documentary dr katie coleman joins us beyond the mic for the back half space is dangerous you have to respect it what's the one thing in space shuttle columbia that was special to you and what emotions went th through you when you heard it was lost to me it's about the people i did fly on columbia twice um but it's about the people that we lose and and I think it just, um, I think there's a lot of hope involved in spaceflight. The hope that something impossible is actually possible. And whenever there is some kind of accident, and certainly when it um, happens to people, it makes you begin to doubt, like, is hope, is hope not real? Is there not as much hope as I thought? And I think that's what is so affects uh, different people. But uh, I loved, um, I loved sitting on Columbia in my seat doing my job. I just loved being on her. As you said goodbye to your family before each mission, how did your emotions change from mission one all the way to mission three? It's still hard every time. There's something about that last hug that is just, you know, where you just feel like if you let go, all might be lost, but then you just have to, and you just have to end that hug and go do your job. How did your time in space inspire you to help others? It made me realize that space is very compelling and it gives people like me a microphone and a platform that we might not have had because people want to hear about space. And I believe in using the fact that they'd like to listen to us to tell them things that we, things that we think they need to know. It's time for One Big Question with Dr. Katie Coleman documentary is space the longest goodbye katie there's a talk of a new space race america versus china what concerns do you have because of it i don't like things to be limited i like solutions to be you know increasing and uh and so the fact that maybe two of the countries with the greatest resources are not going to be able to work together is really disappointing to me and at the same time this is the situation that we're in I think as people, we have an association of space explorers. It includes everyone who's ever been to space can be a member for an incredibly low fee. And the Chinese astronauts are members of that. And so we'll see about what kind of bridge building. I mean, we're restricted by law not to be able to discuss technical aspects of space. But uh, we, I think there's some good bridge building that happens when people discuss space together. She loves drinking an Artemis, relaxing on the couch with her cat, and wants you to watch space the longest goodbye thank you a movie like no other no other space movie i think it's pretty amazing i'm pretty proud to be in it dr katie goldman thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today well thanks and thanks for all the questions some of them hard and that my friends <laughs> is i'll be on the mic shortcut if you're enjoying these conversations please check out another beyond the mic episode to find more actors artists 
and people you need to know. We'd also appreciate a like and subscribe on the Good Pods app.